Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So in this video, I wanna talk about how much time that you should spend learning blockchain programming. So before I get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the like button down below. And as always, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. All right, so let's talk about how much time that you should spend learning blockchain programming, all right? And I'm answering this question because I've gotten this question a lot, specifically about my blockchain developer bootcamp. People ask me, you know, how long does it take to complete the bootcamp? You know, how much time should I spend every day, every week on the bootcamp? And I've also gotten lots of other questions, just like how much time does it take to become a blockchain program programmer? How much time should I spend learning blockchain programming? Stuff like that. So I want to answer all those kind of in one go in this video. All right. So there's a couple of different things I want to say about this. One, there's no like real set amount of time that it'll take for you to become a blockchain developer. You know, everybody's starting from a different position. You know, some people are starting from square one, like knowing no programming at all. And it's going to take that person a lot longer, you know, to, to learn blockchain than somebody who already knows, you know, a few programming languages or has some sort of programming experience, right? So there's no one size fits all answer. But I want to kind of unpack this and give you some pointers so that you can set your own time goal and sort of own time estimate about how long it will take you to hit specific goals, okay? And I'm going to let you define those goals because it's hard to say, you know, what actually constitutes knowing how to program in blockchain, right? You have to sort of decide for yourself, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you with all those right now. All right, so in order for you to figure out how much time you should spend every day or every week, it's helpful to have a bigger goal in mind, right? And then work backward from there to break down how much you know, time you should spend every day or every week, right? So let's look at some different figures maybe to figure that out, right? Let's start with this idea of the 10,000 hour rule. And you might have heard of this. This is you know, the idea that it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert at something or a world class, right? And that comes from uh, the Malcolm Gladwell book, Outliers. And this idea is based on uh, some research from a scientist, Anders Ericsson. He has a really great book called Peak. Uh, it's actually a full title. I can't always remember what it is. Peak Secrets from the New Science of Expertise, right? So go check out those books if you haven't already. Anyways, this whole idea is that it takes 10,000 hours to become, you know, great at something essentially. And let's just use that as a starting point, right? So let's work back from that. And let's just chop it down to like 10% and say, you know, a thousand hours, okay? And maybe that's what it would take in order for someone to be competent from, you know, basically square one, having never known uh, how to do it before. So let's take a thousand hours as a starting point, right? And then figure out how long it'll take you to get there. So, you know, what length of time do you want to spread a thousand hours over? A year, two years, three years? So if it's a year, then that means you need to spend 20 hours every single week in order to accumulate that thousand hours across an entire year, roughly speaking, right? And if you broke that down even further, you know, are you going to work five days a week? Or are you going to work seven days a week? If you're going to work five days a week, then that means it's four hours a day. It's basically a part-time job all year round just to accumulate a thousand hours uh, of progress. And that's an example of how you break it down. And I'm not saying you have to set a goal of a thousand hours, but you want to try to set some sort of goal. You want to figure out where you are. Are you a beginner? Are you an experienced programmer? And do you want to break into this and just try to set an estimate? Maybe you just start with a hundred hours or maybe you start with a few hundred hours. I mean, a hundred hours is a lot of work, right? 200 hours is a lot of work, but maybe you set some estimates for yourself about how long it'll take for you uh, to reach breakthroughs, right? And just think about it in terms of volume and then work backward from there. To think about how long it'll take you every single week in order to get there, right? And I think you'd be surprised if you think about it this way. Think about it in terms of volume, okay? And that's going to lead to a couple of other things that I want to emphasize. The next thing is talking about, you know, how much time you want to spend, you know, in each individual session when you sit down to learn something new, okay? When you do this, you really want to sit down and devote your full undivided attention to learning programming, learning blockchain programming. You want to turn off, you know, music. You want to turn off everything else that might distract you. Don't watch TV. Don't let other people talk to you. It's best to just be in a room alone and concentrate, okay? You really want to get into deep work. That's this whole idea that you're, you know, fully engrossed in what you're doing. You're absorbing the information. So also with that 10,000 hour rule, it's not just 10,000 hours of just 
hanging out and like being around the idea. It's like 10,000 hours of focused work. All right. And that's what it takes in order to develop any amount of expertise is like basically getting in it and then like curing confusion. You're basically like pressing into it and getting uncomfortable until it starts to make sense. Like that's how your brain changes. And that's how you actually learn the new skills. Okay. So you want to try to devote, you know, blocks of time to kind of get uncomfortable and get over each hump in each learning session, okay, to learn new concepts and learn new skills, okay. So whenever you do this, it takes some time for you to actually achieve focus and get into this deep place in your mind to where you're going to have those breakthroughs and learn uh, uh, extensively, okay. So I recommend that you're setting out, you know, bare minimum of one hour when you're sitting down to do this. I recommend really going more like 90 minutes to two hours because it takes a certain amount of time just to get into that deep focus and you really want to maintain that deep focus for a certain period of time and then you're going to kind of naturally level off. Your focus is going to, uh, your attention is going to start draining and you're going to get diminishing, excuse me, diminishing returns after a while. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that spending four or five hours of unbroken time I and mean, that's probably a little extreme. Uh, you certainly want to break it up at that point. But at a minimum, one hour more recommended like 90 minutes to two hours per session to really get in and make sure that you're like grasping concepts and like learning things. And that's what I recommended for people who've asked me about the boot camp. Like whenever you're doing content from the boot camp, I really recommend setting blocking off like two hours in your schedule to really sit down and get into it and absorb the information because that's how long it really takes for new concepts to set in. All right, now I want to give you a tip that will help you achieve this time goal. And I'm going to tell you something that I did when I first started programming. Okay. So whenever I first started, I was doing these types of things. I set like sort of time goals. I said, you know, maybe it'll take me, you know, a thousand hours to get good at this, or maybe it'll take me 500 hours to get good at this. All right. Cause it takes a long time to really get good at new skills. All right. And what I started doing was keeping a time sheet. Okay. And this did a lot of things. Number one, it helped me see what my actual progress was towards these goals, right? If I was going to set a goal of, you know, a hundred hours to be good at blank, then I needed to know, you know, exactly how much time I was spending that was going to add up to that hundred hours. Okay. And whenever I did this, it also gave me some pretty deep insights into the amount of time I was actually spending on focused work. You know, it's easy to, you know, say, I want to go off and spend a lot of time learning, uh, you know, programming, right? And then you think you've done it all day. You're like, oh, I spent eight hours working on programming today. And no, you really didn't. I bet you only spent a fraction of that time actually doing focused work, actually learning things in deep concentration, okay? And that's what I found when I started tracking my own time, was that I thought I was doing something all day, and really I'd only spent about four hours maybe of focused, concentrated uh, time learning it, right? It's really easy to get distracted. It's really easy to spend time on uh, things that don't really matter. You, What you want to do is uh, set aside time where you're, focusing and it's really potent. All right. You want to track this to keep yourself accountable and also track your progress towards your total time goals. Okay. The other thing this did was showed me like it, it helped me to track where I was hitting breakthroughs and watching my progress actually start to snowball. So what I would do is I would take like a line, right? I would just put it in a spreadsheet. I would say, you know, here's the date, here's the task. Let's say I spent, uh, you know, and then I would say how much time. So I'd say like, you know, Monday, I spent, you know, an hour on, let's just say solidity, right? And then uh, I would just say, you know, date, task, hour. And I would write this out, right, towards my goals. And then I would start to see that I had some big breakthrough and I would highlight it on the spreadsheet, right? And I would keep going and I'd see another breakthrough and I'd highlight it and another breakthrough. And what happened is the breakthrough started getting, you know, uh, uh, happening more and more frequently, right? I could see my progress. I could actually visualize it. I could graph it if I wanted to. And that was a reinforcement that what I was doing was working, right? And it allowed me to see it and it also allowed me to project uh, where my learning was going. And it also helped me set better time estimates on how long it would take me to learn another concept. And I could actually budget my time and ration it. 
Okay, so that's another really good tip about how to figure out for yourself how long you should spend learning blockchain programming or any programming or any skill. Okay, so I hope y'all help. Hope y'all found these tips helpful. Again, you can always download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com. As always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click the thumbs up button down below. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.